and we're rolling overview of the Bible, second and third John. We're going to look at second and third John, uh, epistles by John, uh, once again believed to be John the Apostle, John the, the brother of James, one of the sons of thunder, you know, John the beloved, uh, John, one of the original 12. So anyway, and, and by this time, it looks like John is pretty old because he addresses, he starts the letters, both first, or second and third John, with the elder to. And then the, then second John, it's to the chosen lady and her children. And, you know, this may be a personal letter to an individual, but it's, it sounds like there's some coded language in some of these. Like this may be saying to the chosen lady, maybe terminology for to the church and her children to the, the body of Christ, to the bride of Christ, whom I love in truth, and not, I only also, uh, and not only I, but also all who know the truth. Uh, and so he, he, he starts it here, and he's writing to um, the chosen lady, but it's interesting because he ends it, verse 13, the children of your chosen sister greet you. you know, And so it, it, it kind of looks like it, it could be two individual women, but it sounds more likely that it's, I'm writing to this church, and the church that I'm writing from also greets you. The, body, the bride of Christ from here greets you. And so it's kind of like coded language. Reminds me a little bit of when I was uh, corresponding with a friend in, a, in a, a Muslim country, and he would write to me and say, well, we just introduced a whole family to the business, and we, 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 we had a meeting with the father and the son of the business, and he's talking about it was, that's a prayer meeting with the Father and Jesus, and he says whole families have come in after just hearing about the business for the first time. It means they got everyone got saved, and so but using that kind of coded language, and uh, and so he goes on and, and and once again he's concerned about truth and that there's deception that's coming into the church. Uh, verse four: I was very glad uh, to find some of your children walking in truth, just as we have received commandment to do from the Father. And I and now I ask you, lady, not as writing to you a new commandment, but one which had from the beginning that we love one another. And John is always considering that. Then he's verse 7, For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is the deceiver and the antichrist. The same thing he said in his earlier epistle. Watch yourselves that you may not lose what we have accomplished, but that you uh, may receive full re reward. And, and he goes on, I'm just going to finish up with, with this. Uh, he says, if anyone comes to you in verse 10, does not bring this teaching, uh, do not receive him into your house and do not give him a greeting. You know, that's, that's a pretty severe thing. You know, love everybody, but if someone comes and they're teaching you something other than this truth that we've, we've given to you, don't even let them in your house. And I know I used that. <laughs> I had actually had a relative that came in. They were in a cult kind of thing and they came to my house and they were knocking on the door and they were going to come to share. And I wouldn't even let them in the house because I remembered what said in Second John. So I kept... Kept my, it was my aunt. I kept her out on the porch. Anyway, because uh, so it says in verse 11, for the one who gives him a greeting participates in his evil deeds. And I thought, well, I'm not exactly sure what this is talking about, but I don't even want to, I don't even want to play around with that. Uh, and then he just ends it with, in fact, I, I've got many things to share with you, but I want to come and share them in person. And that's kind of the way he ends the second epistle. Uh, but he, he does say, the children of your chosen sister greet you. And once again, I think that's probably talking about, it's more, more likely to me, and that's just my opinion, is that it's talking about the group of believers as he's writing from to a group of believers that is receiving this letter. And then he goes on to the third letter, and it's just, it's kind of a personal letter written to, uh, once again, the elder to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. And <clears throat> likely this is a, an individual, and John apparently wrote some of these letters, you know, more than those. He, he he mentions a letter in verse 9 in 3 John, I wrote something to the church, you know, another, another letter. And, you know, we see references to letters that he's written in different places. And, and probably the most famous verse out of 3 John is verse 2. Beloved, I pray that in all respects that you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. And so this has been a, a verse that's been used just to say God really wants us to uh, prosper and be in good health. Uh, but the, the equation there is just as your soul prospers. So if we have a healthy soul, then he wants us, the rest of us should uh, align with that. If we have a healthy soul, then our, we, should be, we should prosper and in, in be successful in the things we do and be in good health. And so that's just the desire or pronouncement that John makes over those that he's writing to, under Gai, over Gaius particularly, and 
probably all those are receiving his letter. Uh, and he says, verse 3, For I was very glad when brethren came and bore witness to your truth, that is, how you are walking in truth. I have no greater joy than to hear my children walking in the truth. And that's, I understand that. You know, that's, um, I don't have the experience with John, but I have experience of having pastored in another place and gotten a church started in a different country. And to go back and find some of them that are walking in the truth, it really is uh, something that brings joy to your heart. Um. And then he, he kind of encourages them, and they're doing well in verse 5. Beloved, you are acting faithfully in whatever you accomplish for the brethren, especially when they are strangers and they bear witness to your love before the church, and you will do well to send them on their way in a manner worthy of God. He's just saying, thanks for taking care of those that are coming through, that, are, that are, have given themselves to the preaching of the gospel and to evangelizing the nations. For they went out for the sake of the name, accepting nothing from the Gentiles, Therefore, we, went, we ought to support such men that we uh, may be fellow workers with the truth. So he's saying, your support for those that are actually out there doing the work, that are preaching, that are evangelizing, that are, that are taking the gospel to these other places and into the uh, Gentile world, says your participation with them, uh, or your helping them, is, is a participation with them, that you are actually helping them. You are kind of getting that reward, just like... Uh, Talked in the Old Testament about those that go into battle, those that watch the baggage get the same reward as those that go to the battle. And here, if you're supporting those that are doing the work, you're also participating in, uh, with them in that. Verse 90, he writes this warning. I wrote something to the church, but Di Diotrophes, Di whatever his name is, who loves to be first among them, does not accept what we say. So there's a guy there apparently uh, likes to be the one that everybody goes to and hears from, and he's got the truth. And uh, he's kind of opposing what John writes. And so he's, he's kind of giving a warning there about him. For this reason, if I come, I will call attention to his deeds, which he does, unjustly accusing us with wicked words. And not satisfied with this, neither does he himself receive the brethren, for he, and he forbids those who desire to do so and puts them out of the church. So here, you know, John's got some pretty strong words for some people. This guy that's always talking about love. Uh, he talked about not praying for those that... That sin, uh, sin leading to death. He's he's talking about just, just addressing this guy directly and talking, you know, how he's unjustly accusing them and the evil words that he's talking and and the things that he's doing, even forbidding people to come into the church because he wants to be the authority. This diatrephes. Anyway, so verse eleven, beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. The one who does good is of God, and the one who does evil has not seen God. Once again, John is so black and white, this or that, it's this or that. He says, if you do good, you're of God. If you do evil, you're, you've not seen God. And then he, he highlights a guy, and it'd be nice to be this guy, you know, Demetrius, you know, that your name is in the Bible for a good thing. I'd hate to be this other guy that just got mentioned, your name's forever in the Bible, and it's not, not a very good report. But Demetrius has received a good testimony from everyone and from the truth itself, and we also bear witness, and you know that our witness is true. I had many things to write to you, but I'm not willing to write them to you with pen and ink. Uh, but I hope to see you shortly, and we shall speak face to face. Peace be to you. The friends greet you. Greet the friends by name. And so we see Demetrius is given uh, a recommendation, and, uh, and we also bear witness. You know that our witness is true. Once again, he's saying, you know, if you're going to listen to somebody, listen to the apostles from old. Listen to, and I'm one of those. Go back to the words that they spoke and what they said. And, uh, and he says, uh, uh, I'm willing, I'm, I have many things I'd like to write to you, but I'm, I don't want to just write them. He says, so I'm hoping to see you pretty soon. I want to tell you face to face. And then he says, peace be to you. The friends greet you. Greet the friends by name. And, you know, I, I think it was from this passage that we've got a whole denomination called the friends and because they, they took that. And, and that's a wonderful way, you know, just John greeting with love. Uh, those other brothers and sisters in Christ, the friends greet you and greet the friends by name. Once again, uh, as he did in Second John, I think the chosen lady from one place and the chosen sister from the other place. Here he's the friends from here, greet the friends over there. And uh, it's just talking about that commonality and the love that we have for one another as we all abide in the love of Jesus Christ.